This is the TP-Link Deco B67. It's a mesh Wi-Fi 7 system, and basically it's designed to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home, increase Wi-Fi speeds, and you don't have to have Wi-Fi 7 devices for it to work. It's backwards compatible with other Wi-Fi devices, older Wi-Fi devices, I should say. So they have this depiction in the back where basically three of them work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage throughout your home. Anyways, I'm going to do a bunch of speed test range tests using my following Wi-Fi 7 devices and we're going to see how well this does. So we got that signature 7 look with the deco. We got some vents up on the top and we have some vents on the bottom. I'm hiding some of that info and there is a factory reset right there. As far as the ports, well, we got a WPS button and then as far as the ports, we got the gigabit, 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit. And then we have a USB 3.0 and we have the power port right here. We got the power supply right here. It is 100 to 240 volts and the output is 39.6 watts. Comes with an ethernet cable, doesn't specify the category. Got the quick installation guide and we have the factory reset tool right here. I had a chance to play with this thing. I set it up as my main mesh system, ran it for about two weeks and I did all my speed test range tests. I have all those numbers right here. Before we get into the numbers, I wanted to mention a couple things. Number one is there were no drops, nothing abnormal, super easy to set up using Deco app, which we'll go over momentarily. Number two is this actually happens to be the same mesh system as the Deco BE68. So same speed rating, same ports, same everything as far as I know. And really the only difference is, and I shouldn't have said same everything, but really the only difference is, is where they're sold. So the B67 is sold on Amazon, where the B68 that I've reviewed already is sold at Best Buy. So that's pretty much the place that it's sold, but I think physically everything else is the same. So just wanted to mention that in case you guys are wondering. And number three is that I've already done a wireless backhaul video on this thing where I actually hook up my Mac mini to this thing via Wi-Fi while it's in wireless backhaul, meaning while this is wirelessly talking to the main router. And I actually run internet speed tests and I show you guys as it's running what speeds I'm getting. And then I hook up my Mac mini via ethernet to this thing and then I run another internet speed test, actually more than one I think. And I show you guys how much of an improvement that is. And it's actually pretty incredible what these Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems can do. Um, especially like this mid-tier one, very, very powerful, very powerful. Highly recommend watching that video, links below, and I'll also put the product links below as well in case you guys are interested. And while you're down there, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. I really appreciate all the support. Let's get started with the numbers. So we'll start off with the internet speed test. Now, as you guys already know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And this deco can handle those speeds because my five gig comes in uh, to the 10 gig port and I still have full five gigs at the main one. Well, in fact, I actually put a main sticker on this one, so I'll just use this one. Uh, so my internet comes in at five gigs. So at this, at this uh, place, I actually have the full five gigs. So if I do a Wi-Fi speed test, I haven't seen Wi-Fi hit five, but I have seen it pass four. Uh, it didn't pass four for this router. Very close actually, like, almost 3.7 down upload wasn't as fast but then again it is an internet speed test and for some odd reason with the wi-fi's on the upload on internet speed test they're usually not as fast when it's on wi-fi now the interesting thing is that if you were to actually um, do an internet speed test on your computer because even though it's going in at five and at, at this at this source it's actually five, but as soon as it comes out from the 2.5, it gets capped to 2.5 gigabit speed. So if I do an internet speed test on my computer via ethernet, I get just under 2.5 gig speeds. Now here's the interesting thing. If I wireless backhaul to it and the routers are close enough to each other, the decos are close enough to each other, I can actually get faster than that, and that's what the wireless backhaul video shows. So there are some nuances here, uh, but if I were to just straight wire everything, I, I actually can't get faster than 2.5 gigabits with this thing because there's only one fast 10 gig port. So with the local speed test, I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. And in the case of wired and wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which then jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the computer. And so this isolates this router. If you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits, you can actually use the 2.5 gigabit port, the middle one, 
to hook up your internet and then you can actually get a full 10 gig LAN going. And if I actually do that, I will actually get faster speeds on my local speed test. However, I don't think that's a fair test for me because if I use my 2.5 for the internet, well, now my internet's capped to 2.5 even at the source. So if I come out of the 10, I'm, I'm capping my speeds even at the main one, which I don't want to do. So that's why I actually reserved the 10 gig for the internet and then I continued with the 2.5. So when you guys see these speeds, the single router configuration on the local speed test, I got just under 2.5 down and up on Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi can actually go faster. It's really the port that's limiting these speeds because the, the Wi-Fi in this thing is very, very strong. And then on wired backhaul, because there's there's 2.5 gigabits on the other ones as well, I actually got 2.5, basically the same speeds on wired backhaul that I did on single router configuration, which was to be expected. And the most impressive thing about this mesh system being like a mid-tier mesh system is its wireless backhaul uh, speeds were very, very impressive, very, extremely impressive. Um, almost 2.2 down and almost 2.2 up. I mean, not quite, um, you know, 2.18. Uh, down and 2.16 up. So next we jump into range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. So essentially the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. So I used to live in another place a few years back and over there, my range was horrendous compared to where I live now. Now I live in more of an open area, so I typically get a lot more range. Over there, there's no way I'd be getting um, some of these numbers because there were so many walls. In, in fact, it was actually in a building. So routers and walls everywhere. Okay, so basically at yeah, 20 feet away inside my place, basically got the same exact speeds um, because again, it's really the router that's limiting it because the Wi-Fi in this thing is very strong. At 50 feet, this is when I go outside, getting very, very fast download speeds, but the upload speeds are starting to take a hit. And at 100 feet, which is actually across the street, I do a speed test and I got 923 down and 488 up. So very impressive numbers, ping and jitter were very low as well. So now we jump into setup and configuration and for this use the Deco app, it's available both for the iPhone and on the Android and super easy to set up. Walks you through the process of making the basic connections and then it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name which is your SSID and a password and if you wanted to you can pick the same one as the router you're replacing and your devices should automatically connect to the new one but just remember that both the Wi-Fi name which is the SSID and the password they're both case sensitive. Okay, so once it's all set up it shows you the connections between these wired or wireless backhaul or a mix and match of both. Um, and then if you have any TP-Link smart home devices that actually also shows up in there as well, you can control it from there if you wanted to. I personally like the Casa app, so I use it with that. But if I wanted to, I can use the Deco app to control it. Um, it comes with some basic security features included in the price and then they have more advanced ones for a separate subscription. And the same is true for parental controls. So for parental controls, you get, you could block out websites, you can set uh, filters on certain categories and then you can set certain times that they can use the Wi-Fi. Now you you can't fully control the time for that. That actually requires a separate subscription and then with the separate subscription you also get more advanced parental control features as well. So just as a heads up. Uh, and then for the Wi-Fi name you get the main Wi-Fi name. The 2.45 gigahertz is, is one Wi-Fi name and then for another Wi-Fi name you get the 6 gigahertz and then if you wanted to, you can make an MLO multi-link operation, which kind of combines the bands for another Wi-Fi name, if you wanted to. Mine, my personal recommendation is I like the six gigahertz band. That one's really fast for the fast devices and for everything else, I just connect to the main um, 2.4 and five. And then I actually don't even use the MLO most of the time. I pretty much, I like MLO, but more for wireless backhaul than for an SSID. I mean, but the MLO works fine as well. So there's nothing wrong with using the MLO just as a heads up. Um, so then you could get a guest Wi-Fi for guests and then you also make an Internet of Things Wi-Fi if you wanted to for smart home devices like security cameras, smart light switches, things of that nature. Um, and then 
pretty much aside from that, it's all kind of the basic features. You could check for network optimization, um, whether you're using the deco and router mode or an access point mode. If you wanted to, you could set um, certain things to optimize. Um, so there's some decent number of options in there, most of which I leave kind of untouched. Uh, and then obviously firmware updates, you can also control the LED if you want it off and stuff like that. In summary, this is a very good mesh system for anyone with internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. Whether you're using wired backhaul, wireless backhaul, it has solid performance. So very good numbers, range test performance wise, just a solid, solid mesh system. Especially in the mid tier, this thing is actually performing very, very strongly. So I for sure recommend it for up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. Can you get it if you have faster than 2.5 gigabit speeds? If you want to, you can. Um, just remember that, let's say if you have five gig speeds, it goes in at five, it's gonna come out at 2.5 if this is the thing that you're using for your ethernet connected devices. Um, unless you're gonna start using wireless backhaul, um, which is an option, uh, but for wireless backhaul, distance matters a lot more than for wired backhaul. So there are some nuances that uh, you have to keep in mind, but generally speaking, up to 2.5, this thing's an absolute beast, absolute beast. So if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button, like the video, share the video, and let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.